How wonderful person, this is Anton, and yeah, we're gonna have to talk about these woolly mammoth mice. The recent announcement from a biological startup that basically created this. A genetically modified mouse whose fur was modified to resemble what mammoths used to have back in the days. And so let's talk about the whys and the hows. But I guess first, let's start with exactly who did this and what exactly is their main purpose. And let's actually just get this out of the way. This is nothing but a stunt. Basically think of it as a kind of a promotion or a commercial that's supposed to wow everyone in order to show us what the startup is capable of. And it obviously worked pretty well. This is known as the Colossal Biosciences, and it's a company that a few years back announced a very unusual proposition. This company basically announced that they're planning to bring back the extinct mammoths. The process they refer to as the extinction, and they want to do this by combining some of the genetic information we already have about mammoths based on the recovery of various samples from, for example, Siberia, and then using modern elephants to modify their DNA in order to then create a kind of a hybrid. An elephant baby, but whose genes have been modified to be very mammoth-like. Or at least that's the goal they set for themselves to be achieved by 2028. And we've actually talked about some of the previous research similar companies have conducted before, including one startup that even created mammoth meatballs. The video for this is in the description. And so three years later, after their initial announcement, we essentially get the first result. But I guess this is not an elephant and not a woolly mammoth, but instead a woolly mouse. Which makes me wonder if this was maybe some kind of a spelling mistake. Maybe they were never meant to bring back woolly mammoths. Maybe they were actually always talking about woolly mice. But anyway, the point is that we now have this. A super cute looking mouse resembling some kind of a guinea pig that to some extent could be called a mammoth hybrid. But here let's actually talk about exactly what was achieved and how this was achieved and also discuss why it's extremely unlikely that that mammoth goal is going to be achieved anytime soon. Well, I guess let's start with the video of these cute little mice because they sure look adorable. As a matter of fact, I would not be surprised if this actually goes viral and becomes a pretty common pet in the future. I mean, I for one would love to have a woolly mouse. But the first important question to ask here is why mice? Why couldn't they actually just jump into elephants right away and start giving them this amazing hair? Well, that's actually because we know so much about mice and their genetics, and because mice have been used in genetic research for a very, very long time. As a matter of fact, all of the genetic techniques used for gene modification have basically only been done in mice and may not actually work in other species. As a matter of fact, some of these techniques, including the one used in this study, have been previously tried on other animals, but failed. And so it's not entirely clear if anything from this study can be translated to other animals like elephants. But in essence, here's what they actually did. First of all, they analyzed 59 genomes from various mammoths that lived between 3500 and 1.2 million years ago, and then compared this to various studies using Asian elephants for a total of 121 genomes. And the point was obviously pretty simple. Discover the genetic differences and find out which genes might be responsible for turning elephants into mammoths one day. And so inside the mammoth genome, the team was able to identify very small mutations that potentially affect hair pattern and possibly fat metabolism, or basically genes that made mammoths able to survive cold temperatures. And the actual process of how they discovered this is technically kind of brilliant. Here they actually compared this to what we know about mice genes based on previous research in mice and mice hair. In other words, they compared the genes from elephants, mammoths, and mice, and discovered that there were certain genes that seemed to be kind of related. Specifically, they actually found certain mutations that were also in mice that would occasionally make mice hair just a little bit different. In some cases, it even made their fur kind of appear mammoth-like. In other words, they discovered what's known as coat phenotypes. There are actually lots of different studies on this topic, and this has been previously studied for many, many decades. Here's actually one of the older studies from back in 1991. And so here they discovered at least eight genes that seem to change the mice hair, making it appear golden and making it appear, for the lack of better words, wooly. Basically just a little bit curly and a little bit longer. And specifically they discovered that at least one gene seemed to be disabled in mammoths, but was active in mice. And so here they tried to disable this gene in mice, discovering that they actually did change their hair, giving them a much more curly appearance. And once these genes have been identified, they now decided to alter them using three separate techniques. For example, the famous CRISPR gene modification, which disabled five of these genes in various fertilized eggs and resulted in 11 pups that ended up looking like this. Basically, mice whose hair was at least three times longer 
and much curlier, wavier, with even whiskers having a curl. Then they used a slightly different study where gene modification was done on the stem cells. Here the genes were disabled inside the embryonic mice stem cells, which was then combined with what's known as homologous recombination in order to produce the exact mutation that we observe in mammoth DNA. This was an extremely precise genetic modification, which once again produced very similar mice with very similar appearance. And so once these mice were produced, once they were filmed and photographed, all of this of course kind of went viral, with the researchers from the startup basically claiming that they now have the ability to create complex genetic combinations that took nature millions of years to create, and claiming that we're just a little bit closer to this concept of the extinction, or bringing back animals that have gone extinct. But here's the thing, quite a lot of researchers and quite a lot of scientists that are familiar with these techniques and actually have done these techniques in mice so far have been kind of critical about this and don't actually think this is going to go anywhere. And so I guess let's discuss the criticisms and why it's extremely unlikely we're going to have mammoths running around anytime soon. With the first obvious fact being that this only involved eight genes. But in terms of actual differences between mammoths and elephants, Quite a lot of research suggests that there are at least 1.5 million different genes. And this is actually based on a study by the main researcher from the startup who has done these calculations back in 2015. And so modifying 8 genes compared to 1.5 million is obviously just a very small first step. Which is why a lot of additional researchers believe that the only thing that might be possible is to essentially make an elephant kind of look like a mammoth. At least in terms of physical properties and maybe hair. It's extremely unlikely it's going to be possible to recreate an actual mammoth, especially because we still have no idea what most of these 1.5 million genes even do. And it will actually take a few decades before the function for the majority of these genes is finally discovered. And so yeah, 8 out of 1.5 million. Then we have the additional problem in regards to elephants just being way more complex than mice. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned, a lot of these genetic modification techniques might not even work in elephants, like they have not worked in a lot of other species. We know they work for mice, but quite a few of them don't work in more complex animals. And so here we don't even have the right techniques yet in order to modify the genes inside elephants. This is especially true for that recombination technique I mentioned previously that was used in these mice. And because we don't have any specific methods developed for elephants, it's extremely unlikely that any of this is going to work, at least for now. And then there's the fact that this is elephants and not mice. Due to sheer size and due to the complexity, elephants have a much lower reproduction. For example, elephant pregnancy lasts approximately two years. Whereas for a typical mouse, it's only approximately three weeks. And so being able to create an elephant baby with modified genes and then potentially testing this over and over is just going to take a tremendously long time. And then there's also the problem of ethics. Asian elephants are an endangered species. And so it's actually extremely unlikely that anyone is going to give this company any rights to conduct any experiments on the elephants. And even if they do get the right, it's probably going to take an extremely long time. And so even though their goal was to do this by 2028, there's absolutely no chance they can get even close to this. Or the intriguingly, approximately a year ago in 2024, the company here actually did something really interesting that to some extent could still help them do research without crossing any barriers. Here they did something that's used in mice quite a lot when doing genetic research. They basically took some of the cells from an Asian elephant and then turned these cells into an embryonic state, basically turning regular cells into stem cells through a very well-known process that's even used in humans. And so here by using stem cells from elephants, they can actually do research without even needing live animals and without making things too unethical. Essentially here the goal was to create a model elephant embryo that can then be slowly changed into an embryo of a mammoth. Here's actually a picture released last year showing us various stem cells from an Asian elephant. But still, being able to create embryo of elephants and being able to create hairy mice is a far cry from being able to create an actual mammoth. And so the reality is that what the Colossal was able to achieve is essentially very cute mice with somewhat strange fur that does resemble a mammoth. Or at least resembling the fur of mammoths to some extent. And though obviously something very similar could be achieved in an elephant, this will definitely not make them mammoths either. It will just make them funny looking blonde elephants. And so whether this is actually useful or not, I guess only time will tell. But at least for now, all we know for sure is that 
we can now create these super cool looking mice and maybe one day they'll be in every home everywhere. And as a matter of fact, if I was running the startup, I would actually forget about all of this stuff and focus on selling these mice by putting the purchase button somewhere right here because these things look super cute. I mean, this is literally like a tiny version of a guinea pig. And so maybe instead of the extinction, they'll focus on making animals look super cute. And mostly because this whole process of mammoth resurrection is maybe not the best idea in the world. I mean, they probably went extinct for a reason. As a matter of fact, today researchers believe that the same threats that made them go extinct approximately 4,000 years ago have actually now become even more dangerous. So it's actually quite unlikely that any mammoth is going to survive anywhere, even if they try really hard. Which basically means that this is just a cool, I guess, viral idea and a way to promote your company without doing much. But I don't really expect them to get anywhere, even after decades of research. Although maybe they'll prove me wrong. Anyway, on that note, check out some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. And until then, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.